An act of senseless violence carried out by a madman. Would you be surprised if I told you that the media was trying to blame anyone but you for it? Would you believe what the links that the media and the left are willing to go to, the depths people will sink to, and the facts that they will ignore? We do none of that today. And in fact, today, I issue a challenge to the fatheads in the media. And look for anyone with some political courage. I want to tell you where I was Saturday and the experience that I had after I begin with this. My family and I have been praying for the Gifford family. I didn't I didn't know her really. I, as you know, I don't follow the individual politicians. And we looked for any time that we have said anything about her. And the only time we've ever brought her up is I used her as an example of someone with some political courage. Um, I don't agree with her and her policies, but she was someone who came out and spoke her mind against her own party at one point. And I highlighted her as someone who had courage. We pray for her and her family and all those involved. And we're going to give some perspective today. We're going to set the record straight. But I want to, I want to share something with you because it is time for people to understand that we're not playing political games. And the time for political leadership is now. The time for citizen leadership is now. I feel very much the way I did in a, in a studio I was very nervous to be in. It was one of the first times I was on the air at WABC. And it was in 1998. And I believe it was in August. An August night. And I spoke about Osama bin Laden. Couldn't even pronounce his name. I'd never heard of him before. I just read about him. And Bill Clinton had um, just bombed, I think, the aspirin factory. I remember being on the air, and I said, I've been reading up on this guy in America and New York in particular. In particular, you need to know who this guy is. And nobody knew who I was, and so conservatives started to call, and they were bashing me because I was supporting Bill Clinton. And I said, no, I'm supporting the facts. Listen. And I warned, and I know you know this, I warned that there will be blood and bodies and buildings in the streets of New York. Will you then pay attention? Unfortunately, the answer was, yes, when that happens, I'll pay attention. Thank God what I have been warning about did not happen uh, this weekend. But something, it's hard to categorize this as better because it is such an awful tragedy um, and a an abomination a really a human abomination that a, that a human can make this choice the only I guess um, saving grace in it is he really in some ways while he made the choice um, he was insane he was insane. The guy, I mean, in, he didn't believe that we actually had gone into space. He didn't, um, you know, George Bush blew up the World Trade Center. Um, you know, he, he was nuts. He was rejected from the military. He had been rejected from school. And they said, until you can go see a psychiatrist and prove you're not a danger to people in school, you can't come. He was nuts. 
And I never thought I would live in a world where I would say, thank God for that. But what I have been warning about and what I am concerned about are those people who are seemingly not nuts and decide that they want to be, let's call a spade a spade, an American Al-Qaeda member. Someone who says, I'm not a terrorist, I'm a freedom fighter. No, you're a terrorist. I don't care if you kill in the name of God, Allah, Ronald McDonald, Donald Rumsfeld, or Che. You're a terrorist. Period. I was afraid that's what happened on Saturday. I was actually at Spider-Man when I got word. And my wife and I, we were having our anniversary. And I wanted to make the day about my wife. Because she has put up with so much this year. And we're in Spider-Man. And I'm one of the only people in the media, I think, that take my security seriously. Um, I spend about a million dollars a year on security. Um, I was told today that there, and I keep out of this because I don't want to know about it and I don't want to be paranoid or anything else. There are at any given time 15 credible threats on my life that they are working on. I have one of the best security firms in the world. So when I take my wife out on a date, I travel with at least one, sometimes more. On Saturday, we were traveling with two. One was outside and one was sitting next to me. About halfway through the performance, Matt, who is with me, leans over and whispers in my ear, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm told that you need to see this. I looked at his um, screen, and all it said was, Congresswoman shot in the head. Several may be dead. That's all I knew. I didn't know if it was Michelle Bachman, Nancy Pelosi. I didn't know who it was. I immediately closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and said, please make sure my children are secure. He said, already done, sir. I said, can you find out who was shot? What happened? He said, yes, sir. He got up, the other member of the detail then, was now outside the door of the performance and the two of them stood now at the doorway watching me while trying to find out what was going on. My wife said, what's happening? On our anniversary, I just squeezed her hand and I said, nothing, it's all, it's everything's okay. Just watch. She knew. The reason why I tell you this story And I don't tell um, just you. This is a message to every single member of um, anybody who's in politics, anybody who's in the media, anybody who works at a bank, anybody who uh, is rich, anybody who is famous, anybody who is outspoken, any member of the Tea Party, any member of the anti-Tea Party, Any member of anything that has anything to say in this country, I warn you, troubled times are coming and we must stand together against all violence. We must, we must look at the examples of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And Jesus Christ, 
who, while everyone wanted violence, they stood against it. While the easy way was violence, they stood against it. They were outspoken. They had fiery words. They turned over the tables of the temple. But they were against violence. And in the end, all three of them were killed. All three of them. They thought, those at the time, that their message would be silenced by violence. Somebody violent thought they could stop them with violence. And in the real end, all three of those men won. Because peace and love will always beat violence. I have so desperately this weekend looked for a leader, looked for someone with common sense, looked for someone who would tell the truth. Instead, I find a sheriff who has no facts and blames it on talk radio. Instead, I find, I believe it was Time Magazine that said, if I may quote, we have none of the facts yet. But who'd be surprised if this was a Glenn Beck fan? I've looked for anyone that would not play politics with it. Because this isn't about politics. You see, that's, that's, what, that's what those who run Al-Qaeda try to do. They try to convince their own population that it's about politics, it's about oppression. It's about a, a, a group that can't be stopped because they're too big and powerful, so you have to go out and strap a bomb to yourself and blow yourself up. It's not about freedom fighters. It's about terror. It's about murder. It's not suicide. It's murder. It's madness. It's mayhem. There are three kinds of problems that this nation is facing. One has happened so far. The first category is acts of madmen. It's happened. It's happened. It happened this weekend. Now, we have to choose after each act. Are we thinking people or are we sheep? Are we thinking people that can learn and that can discern and act in responsible ways to save the republic? The second category, the second category is those who are begging for collapse and chaos. And they may not even say they want violence. They just may want collapse because, well, this system is unjust, and if it collapses, and you have them on both the right and the left, and then you have terrorists, those who actually encourage, not by using words like target. If target is now a problem, then maybe we should shut down the store called Target. Or are we thinking people? There have been terrorists. There have been American terrorists. There has been the D.C. sniper, and there's been the Oklahoma City bombers. Terrorists. Americans, and they will come again. There have been crazy people, and they will strike, and they will kill, and they will come again. The question is, do we make them all about politics? Do we balkanize ourselves? Do we become the Israelis and the Palestinians where people are just killing because they don't even know what they're killing for anymore? You killed my brother! Do we do this? Or do we 
pull together. There's politics and there's principles and values. Everybody has an individual choice. The killer this weekend had an individual choice. Kill or don't kill. He chose. He was insane. But now the media and the politicians have a choice. Use this for your own political purposes or be bigger than that. America demands bigger people. America deserves bigger people. Because there are those on the left and the right, and we've been doing research over the weekend. On the left and the right, who do believe violence is the answer? I am not one of them. And next hour, I will issue a challenge to all those politicians, partisans, hacks, all those so-called reporters, bloggers. I will issue a challenge to the United States of America. I will issue a challenge to the President of the United States of America. And I will stand shoulder to shoulder with the President, Barack Obama, who I disagree with vehemently. But I believe we can stand shoulder to shoulder on these things. I will stand shoulder to shoulder with people I find politically reprehensible. Michael Moore, if he chooses to reject violence from all sides. It hasn't happened yet, but I fear it will. Does there have to be blood and bodies and buildings in the streets before we start to act responsibly?